Hello YouTube, in this video we'll talk about two undervolting tools. First one is Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, also called XTU. I've seen in many forums a lot of discussion on whether to use this one or throttle stop. As a personal preference, um, I use throttle stop myself. But this is also a very powerful tool to undervolt any CPU and customize its performance. To undervolt using Intel XTU, once you install the program itself, you go through a reboot process. Once the computer starts, it detects uh, the stock voltages of your system and you can load this application. For testing purposes, I didn't reboot after installing this, so it's running my throttle stop voltages. Once you got this XT ut utility installed, you go into advanced tuning. Here, you can see a lot of sliders, and you can get a little confused about what to um, tinker with, but um, it's really easy. All you have to do is go first into core voltage mode, set it to adaptive, and uh, just undervolt it in this slide. I already set it to this value. Also, you need to undervolt the cache of the CPU. To do that, you go here, take adaptive, and undervolt it. Um, I'll be discussing these values in a minute. If you want to undervolt uh, the GPU inside your Intel processor, this is a section you want to mess with. Click on adaptive, lower these values. Um, many people have asked me if these two have to be uh, the same number, I mean uh, like match. Actually it depends on your CPU, um, like some CPUs can take um, more on the vault than the core than on the cache or vice versa. I've tried this on mine and I've managed to lower it to um, let's say 100 minus 160 while on the core itself I can't go lower than this. As you can see um, on this tool if I move any of the sliders they're synced. So this is a disadvantage of XTU. You can't undervolt this independently as you can in throttle stop which I will show you in a minute. Once you uh, <clears throat> select the undervolt voltage you want to take, you go into stress test. You go into CPU stress test and start the test. Uh, this test, I found out myself, it's not as effective as running OCCT. It won't uh, push the processor as high. Plus, um, remember you need to run um, an utility to stress out your GPU in case you're running a laptop with dedicated graphics to see the max temperatures of your system. Remember they share the same cooling solution and the temperatures won't be the same if you only push one side of the laptop. So yeah, this is a, a very handy tool. I know a, a clear benefit that I found out is that uh, XTU undervolts go straight into the BIOS. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but if I undervolt my laptop using XTU on Windows and I shut it down, I've tried booting on Linux and the processor will still be undervolted. So I've seen some reports on Surface products from Microsoft that that works too. So you might take that into consideration if you want to undervolt uh, on a dual boot setup. Now. Let's head back to throttle stop. On throttle stop, there's a good thing. You can undervolt the CPU core and the CPU cache in different offsets. So you can just try tinkering with your CPU and find out uh, the biggest undervolt you can take. I found out that I can lower this 
CPU cache up to this value without it crashing. But I don't see the need to because my undervolt is good already. Another common question is like, should you undervolt the Intel GPU? Well, it saves battery when running on power saver or running on battery mode on your laptop, so why not? Um, it's the same process on how to undervolt your core. Just go here, take an unlock voltage, go on Adaptev, and start undervolting by 10 millivolt increments in benchmark. This one um, can be pushed really low depending on the processor you have, so this might come in handy. Now, I'm going to teach you how to fix a common issue that has been happening with the latest throttle stop version or after updating to this one. Many people say they can't minimize this into the system tray, and that's correct. It happened to me too. Even if I tick this, start minimize, minimize and close, click on OK, untick taskbar, we we'll just go into the taskbar. <clears throat> If I close the application, I would have to launch it itself two times so the interface pops out again. Well, I found a fix to that. It seems that uh, the tray cache gets confused on, about, on what to show when you update throttle stop versions. So there is a solution. You need to clean the notification area icon cache. To do this, I will give this link in the video description. All you have to do is run this batch file. Don't worry, it's safe. I, I tried it myself. So you download it, unzip it, and uh, run the batch file itself. Um, don't worry, it will just pop a CMD like this, um, a command prompt, then close, and the taskbar might disappear. If that happens, it's because the explorer.x process um, needs to restart. If it didn't restart manually, just go Control Alt Delete, Task Manager, and go into File, Run New Task, and click on Explorer. Type this, click on OK, and Explorer will start again. So, if these settings are right on Throw Stop, you'll have the, the tray icon functionality back. as you can see here well i hope this video was any use to you guys and if you have any other questions suggestions i will gladly take them into consideration and make a new video for you guys have a great day